I'd like you to start thinking about your heart. And I'm talking about your real heart, not the heart that gets broken every time you guys go to a school disco. I'm talking specifically about that uh, muscular pump that sits behind your sternum, inside your thoracic cavity. And I also want you to start thinking about your aortic arch. Now, this, of course, is the main artery leaving the left ventricle and carries blood through our systemic circuit to, amongst other things, our working muscles during exercise. So this is the picture I want you to have in mind. And rather horribly, I want you to imagine that we're going to cut that aorta just here and that oh how gruesome it is blood is kind of being sort of departing this aorta here. i'm sorry i've kind of just murdered you there no no offense meant but i also want to imagine that we are collecting that blood and we have this kind of measuring vessel here and let's say you're at rest what would we expect to happen well first of all of course first of all we'd get some kind of blood collecting in here every time the heart went through its systolic or contractile phase. So every time we got that contraction of the heart, we would get a collection of blood in here. And we actually know that's called your stroke volume. It's the volume of blood leaving the left ventricle per contraction. We also know that that would repeat a number of times each minute. And we can describe that as your heart rate. Now, if I was to give you some sort of typical resting values for this, the amount of blood leaving per sort of, as it were, contraction in that stroke volume Volume, this would be in the region of 70 milliliters. So in here, we would have in the region of 70 milliliters of blood just in here every time this contractile phase takes place, this systole. We also know that the heart would beat something along the lines of 70 beats per minute. So we would see this volume of blood increasing, increasing, increasing. And after a minute, we'd have some volume in here, okay? Now, we already know that's going to be 4.9 litres, but that volume there is what we'd refer to as your cardiac output. Cardiac output being the volume of blood leaving your left ventricle per minute and is actually a product of heart rate and stroke volume, of course. Now, let's take this a little bit further now. We've got that kind of visualisation. <laughs> <laughs> albeit sort of like uh, fairly gory visualization in mind, I want to make absolutely categorically sure that you understand that cardiac output equals, let me choose some kind of purple for that, it equals stroke volume, stroke volume, no surprise here whatsoever, times, and what color shall I go for? Let's go for an orange, heart rate. Okay, I'll see if I can keep these colours consistent as we progress through here. So we've got cardiac output is stroke volume times heart rate. Now, I'd also like to stress that we can put the values in here. Cardiac output is measured in litres per minute. Okay, so that's an L, by the way, not a bracket. We've got uh, cardiac output in litres per minute. So, of course, our stroke volume is going to be measured in litres or millilitres. I'm going to put it as litres here. And we know our heart rate is measured in beats per minute. The other thing that we can stress is how the values of this, and I've already sort of told you it, what would the values of this be at rest? And see if we can actually go about looking at this. Well, we know from what we just discussed that stroke volume is going to be in the region of 70 millilitres, and we know that heart rate is going to be in the region of 70 beats per minute. Now, of course, this might be higher, this might be higher. We're talking about average figures here. Average figures for heart rate, for example, at rest are between 60 and 80 beats per minute. Remember, there are things such as bradycardia, bradycardia, you being a resting heart rate below 60 beats per minute so you might want to just remember that that's also possible but of course therefore we get this equation 70 times 70 that's going to equal for us 4.9 liters or we could round it up and say uh, per minute or we could round it up and say five liters per minute so as you're sitting there taking this video and watching listening to me do my stuff you're probably ejecting from your left ventricle around about five liters per minute on average for all the people that are taking part in this tutorial, okay? So that's all well and good, but our job is not only to go about looking at resting values, not only is it to look at exercising values, but we also specifically need to look at different types of exercise. So I'm immediately gonna to go to the notion of a sub-max exercise condition. Remember, this is a non-maximal exercise. This could be, for example, in your exam question, I might say a marathon runner during the middle of the race. Or they might say, for example, uh, someone who's on a, a 30 minute uh, cycling ride or a training run, they're saying it's not maximal. Well, what values would we actually expect here? Well, at sub-maximal levels, we might expect 
that our stroke volume would go up to something like one li uh, um, <laughs> 100 milliliters, which by the way, just to be clear, is not one liter, it's one tenth of one liter. So we might go to about 100 milliliters. I'll come back to how that happens in a second. And we might expect our heart rate to rise up to something, some sub let's imagine this a 20 year old, submaximal figure of something like 150 beats per minute. So of course, if we go about then our equation, which is effectively 100 times one, uh, uh, 150 we're going to end up with 100 sorry we're going to end up with 15,000 milliliters which of course we can summarize as 15 liters per minute now if, <laughs> if you want to check that on your calculator feel free but trust me that's what that is that might be a typical submax value now can i stress to you these are average values what about if we went to a maximum value what about if the question said to us you need to do this for uh, a person during a 400 meter run or someone who is sprinting, or someone who's sprinting at maximal pace, what might we expect to be the sort of values that we would see here? Well, first of all, a typical value for maximum stroke volume is in the region of 140 milliliters. Let me put the milliliters in, just be helpful. We would expect, you know, a 20-year-old, they can go as high as 200 beats per minute. You know, we've got that basic Carvone in principle, 220 minus your age. And of course, we can then calculate those, and that's gonna give us a reading of something along the lines, well, literally here, of 28 litres or tw uh, per minute or 28,000 millilitres per minute. And that's an interesting sort of maximal value. But can I stress to you that for elite athletes, it can go as high as up to 40 litres per minute. So you just want to be a bear, bear that one in mind. But for you, for me, well, I'm a bit older than you, but for you, you're quite capable of getting to this sort of uh, level if you're in reasonable sort of health and fitness. Okay, so a couple of things I just want to finish off on. There's our big picture. That's how we can calculate uh, volumes. And please be reassured, no one's going to be cutting arteries open or anything crazy like that. But the point I want to make to you and the, the question I want to pose to you is, how is it that stroke volume actually goes up. If I was to remind you that the heart operates by the all or none law, and that is the idea that the heart beats maximally or not at all. So every single contractile phase of the heart is a maximal full contraction of every single myocardial fiber in the heart. How is it that stroke volume gets goes up? How is it that it actually forces more blood? How is it that it contracts more forcefully? Because this law says that it can't do that. Well, of course, the answer to that is in our venous return. I'm not sure whether you've studied that lesson before or after this one, but venous return effectively venous return effectively returns more blood um, to the right atrium during exercise and that causes the heart to swell and to increase and enlarge because of course it's filling up more so of course it elastically recoils with more force and forces more blood out and that's how stroke volume goes up you will also obviously either have learned or will learn how, how heart rate is controlled and how it is increased through neural hormonal and intrinsic factors if you haven't seen that you will get that coming up i'm sure okay that's all from me. There's correct volumes. Uh, volumes. I hope that's useful for you. And uh, look after that heart of those school discos, those six form discos. Cheers.